and some uh, may have gone into academics. But they were sort of mm, inspired by that kind of, 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 of uh, discussion in the book. And what he does, he, he gives us really a model. He draws, uh, um, he tells us the following thing. He said, hey, my name is Schiller. I'm an artist. I'm a poet. I got some money, which is the case. I got a scholarship. Instead of sitting down writing new poems or new big books, I did the most important thing that an artist has to do, and the most important thing that all artists should do if they are given the resources so that they can feed their family while doing it, is to go and read Kant's third critique. That's what I did. And now I'm going to thank you, and in this case it was Prince so Schleswig-Holstein Augustenburg, who was the guy who gave the, it could have been Ford Foundation, it could have been the EU in Brussels, but it was Prince so Schleswig-Holstein Augustenburg, who gave the money. And I'm going to thank you in the way that I'm going to tell you what I found out. And this is marvelous. I found out a model which is very, very useful. The model tells us the following story. There are two big, big, big um, attractive poles, two forces, and we almost are in the vocabulary of Star Wars or something like that, the two forces, forces. And these forces are so, so, so strong that they all the time tend to attract us and draw us into their field, their force field, and sort of get us totally, completely hooked to these two kind of forces. What are the forces? Well, the forces are uh, the force of what in Germany is Stoff, Stoff, matter. And the other force is Form, Form. We are obsessed, says Schiller, that Kant pretends, it's partly true, that we, uh, we, are, we are obsessed with Form and matter. Next step, and this follows the way in which you write management books, I would say. Next step, what happens if you get hooked on these forces? Why are they so fast? Now, well, if you on stuff, you become a real materialist, huh? complete materialist, which means, and it gives God lots of very descriptive examples, so that you become a barbarian, a complete barbarian, sort of busy uh, satisfying your physical, extremely physical needs, and uh, your whole life will become devastated by this kind of uh, materialism. All right, what happens when you get to form and you get stuck in form? What is going to happen then? Well, the thing is that you're going to become an even worse kind of person. And he writes this with concrete examples in head. And the example he is thinking of, and that of, mm, probably is a good thing when you write a book to the Prince of Schleswig-Holstein and Rosenberg, what he thinks of is the terror going on for the moment in, in Paris. So uh, the kind of person he has probably in mind is a Robespierrean tyrant. Someone who is hooked and hooks others on four meaning not form in the sense of the physical form, but form in the sense of logics and thinking. So if you are totally absorbed by form, and if you're given by some horrible circumstance the power to influence others, you will actually bump off those who don't fit the form and try to bend, bend the other ones into the right form, so you become a tyrant. All right, fine. Good management book style, uh, Schiller goes on. Do we want to become tyrants? Do we want to become barbarians? Of course not. So how the hell shall we get out of this situation? Form and matter out of the power field of form and matter. And there comes then in his book a picture, which is a, of course a Finkelmannian picture of archaeology or, or, or beauty, uh, very much tainted by his time. And, an artist today may give their pictures, which would be completely different, and perhaps even the theories would have a slightly different kind of, of, of meaning. Anyway, what he tells us is, think about this farmer uh, that goes out and, and farming on his field, and he sticks the shovel in the ground, and bang, hits something very, very hard. 
he starts to unearth the thing he hits, huh? and up comes an object, which is certainly not this object, but anyway, it's this an object, and he looks at the object, he puts the object there, he admires the object, and he sees a person. He sees a body, a moving body. Uh, an, an idea of a moving body for moving at the same time something extremely hard. In other words, what the person, the farmer in this case, unearthed is something which is not possible to classify as either form or matter. And in this kind of undecisiveness, <clears throat> whether it is form or matter, you become and this is Schiller's uh, hypothesis and his thesis and also his uh, recipe, you may say, you become confused. You become confused uh, in the form matter um, dichotomy. You start to move along, you see, ah, is it form, is it matter, no, it's not, it's a blah, 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 and you work in a thing which you could say is a pendulum movement and which he calls schwung. You become, you get in schwung, get in movement between these two things. And this movement is in itself so agreeable, so you, you like to stay in that kind of movement. And the movement is agreeable because it liberates you from being either or. It keep, get, puts you in the middle field, so to speak, by moving all the time. And it also satisfies something which, according to Schiller, you have to experience as something in between two, uh, two poles. It cannot be experienced by itself. This is important. What is this? This is the third kind of force which um, liberates you for a short movement between these two. And he calls that spiel, play, sort of touching us in the sense that it touches our spiel, trieb, our desire for play. Out of the the the, uh, uh, the dichotomy of either or, where we the scholar characters or whatever you call it, where where you're, where you're stuck. But it's not only that; it's also um, something which again puts us back on the track of Joseph Boys, puts us back on the track of leadership, and puts us back on the track of management. Because what Schiller is doing, what Kant is not doing because Schiller is, is an artist and Kant is a philosopher. And Schiller says that, aha, this kind of Spieltrieb, this kind of Schwung creation, who is responsible for this? Who can sort of give us that kind of playfulness? And, and um, who, whose, whose responsibility is it to maintain us in the Schwung mood so that we don't get stuck in some kind of bureaucratic, formalistic, da 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 or some materialistic... Mm -hmm. Well, he says, I found out who it was. It was me, he says. And not me being, being the poet, uh, the only poet, but me being part of a, uh, of a group of leaders which are artists. So the artist as a manager, the artist as a leader, uh, his role, defined in Schiller's little book, is to keep this kind of spiel, <coughs> to, to, uh, to, to evoke this kind of, of desire for play, desire for, for movement, desire for schwang, by always, in all circumstances in life, finding the crack between the two forces, going in and doing things in various ways. All right.